Hello everyone and welcome back in. Well, this is episode number two of our M60A3, the Sandbox Boneyard. That's what I'm gonna call this. Well, just a quick recap here. Of course, we have this series of photographs of these vehicles all being parked for salvage in this desert boneyard area here. And there's so many great features on some of these photographs. I'm gonna kind of put them all together onto one vehicle and we'll make a small scene around this vehicle, this M60A3 in this type of an environment. Over the course of this video, yep, this one is all about painting. So we'll go through the base colors, the camouflage colors, and as we get towards the end, we'll finish it up with a lot of oil painting. So there's a lot of work to do here. So let's get buckled up. Let's go. Let's begin by adding the base layer, and this is pale sand, and this is going to be applied overall. And even though I have this very vibrant pre-shade, pre-color sort of scheme underneath, I'm not going to worry about trying to let those colors come through. We'll try to get some of that back later on through the chipping process. Now once I have this base layer nice and applied overall, now we can go ahead and start to apply the camouflage colors. All of these camouflage colors, and I'll flash the colors onto the screen, but they're all being desaturated just a bit just to kind of lighten them up a bit with some deck tan. So you'll see that in the descriptions as well. And I'm just kind of following references here. I'm looking at all these various photographs and I've got some color plates and this pattern seemed to have quite a bit of variation vehicle to vehicle. So I feel like I have some leeway here. Now, while there are some variations between vehicles, the camouflage pattern itself does have some rules. First, that first color, the, the field drab, well, that is applied overall in these larger blotches. And then tucked right up next to it, and always next to it in a smaller area, is the secondary camouflage color, and that's earth yellow. Once again, desaturated a bit with some deck tan. And then what really sets this camouflage pattern and makes it very distinctive are these black stripes or these little black bands. And these are to represent either deeper shadows like in the landscape or maybe some shadows from, say, overhanging branches or something to that effect. And of course, the Murdoch pattern, either if you do the greens, the woodlands, or these desert patterns, they can be either airbrushed or hand-painted on. You see references in both directions. I chose to do airbrush because, well, it was just a lot quicker. And now for the fun part, we can start to see how some of these preparations that we did earlier on, the masking is going to start to play with the final finish. Yep, just start removing some of that tape, exposing some of those areas underneath where it's been masked off and reveals the base green color. Because remember, part of our story is this vehicle was originally painted green and then repainted into the desert camouflage. As these masks are re being removed, I'm really enjoying these little pops of color, and these little interesting details here and there. This one last mask over where we took off the drive wheel and the plate there, that's looking pretty nice as well. Yep, I think we're on the right track here. Okay, on to the next challenge. Well, if you recall, part of this process is going to be the hairspray chipping. And so we put quite a few layers of hairspray on this over that pre-shade, those pre-colors. And now it's time to start to reveal some of those areas of chipping and some of those colors that were underneath. Now, I knew going into this that using the real colors, because it is a lacquer-based paint, that the removal process through hairspray chipping is going to be difficult. It grabs on the lacquer-based type paints, really grab on hard. So a little bit of scrubbing, hard scrubbing with the brush. I'll use a toothpick here and there in order just to kind of scratch the surface and get the water to come underneath and activate some of the chips here and there. I'm not trying to do a lot of chipping on this vehicle because looking at those references, they're not really chipped up that much either. There's not a lot of rust, only in certain areas, and there's not a lot of chipping. You know, kudos to the U.S. Army because they do a good job of painting their vehicles. This is one of the photographs that really drew me to this project. I love this photograph. There's so much going on here. So let's start with this area. And of course, if you see from that photograph, there's some rust and discoloration on these louvers on the rear end here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to start replicating some of this. It's going to be a multi-layered process. We'll kind of come back and forth to this area quite a few times throughout this episode here. Just adding some of these, like I said, rust tones. There's some greens in here as well. You can see from the reference photographs. Just kind of build it up slowly but surely. And I really like how this turned out where we put a mask here where this locker had been removed. Now just a bit of chipping on some of these brackets just to, like I said, just to bring out some character, a little bit of definition on these areas just to kind of highlight them a little bit. 
Well, if you haven't figured it out by now, I've been using the reference photographs, going back and forth with those quite a bit, looking for these little visual cues, these points of interest. And I really noticed that the road wheels, for a couple of different reasons, are very interesting. It'll become important as the scene starts to come together. Of course, the first thing you'll notice is they have some nice weathering to them. They've been through, like, say, sand and weather. They've been out there for a while. The paint is kind of faded back. And they're all discolored, and they have, there's different patinas. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if you look at the groundscape around some of these road wheels, these vehicles are heavy, and it's apparently a soft earth area. And so over time, these vehicles have kind of sunk down into the landscape itself and the sand has kind of moved up around the road wheels. So the road wheels themselves are going to be far, fairly important in the final scene. So I do want to spend some time here with these. And then of course there's this drive wheel and this is just a thing of beauty if you want to like rusty things. And in this case, this is going to give that perfect opportunity just to add that little pizzazz, that little touch of color, and of what is going to be more or less a drab type of scene, you know, because once again, we don't have a lot of weathering going on here, and we've got a desert landscape. So these little areas where we can add some color, either through the masking and revealing green underneath, or in this case, some rust tones on the drive wheel, these become very important. One brief moment to say thank you to my Patreon. It is through their help and support that I'm able to bring these videos to you. If you enjoy this channel and you enjoy these videos, please consider joining Patreon. The link is in the description below. In exchange, early viewing of these videos, special feature videos for Patreon only, photographs of ongoing projects, a Discord server to share our work, please consider supporting this channel. Thank you. Well, working with those road wheels did take a little bit of time, but we're finished with those, and now we can start using our oils on the remainder of the vehicle. This photograph shows where we're gonna be at the end of this video, but we have a lot of steps to get from here to there. Now the process, again, I'm using oil paints, is gonna be the same whether it's on the turret here or on some other parts of the vehicle. I'm gonna kinda highlight and just kinda focus in on the turret, but once again, it's the same process throughout, so just rinse and repeat around the vehicle as necessary. The first step with these oils, at least in this case, I just wanted to bring out some of the, you know, some variation and definition on some of the camouflage colors. So I'm using oil paints that are very, very similar to the base color paints or the camouflage color paints, and just giving a little bit of nuance, a little bit of fading here and there, just to make this camouflage pattern a little bit more interesting. Now, I've already mentioned before that these are not rusting hulks out in the middle of some field. They're fairly well preserved in this environment, but there are rust areas, and I want to try to capture some of those. And also, just for artistic license, just to kind of convey that idea of this, these are left out to the pasture, left out for salvage, that the rust tones kind of play into that. So I do want to add some rust here and there. I do add a little bit of speckling with very highly thinned oils, just a few splatters here and there. Most of it will fade back in just the slightest nuance of color onto the camouflage pattern. If I get a droplet or two here or there that are a little too heavy, I can either erase it or in some cases draw them down a little bit just to give a some of a rusty rain mark sort of an idea. The idea here is to go slow, just bring it up very nice and slowly. I, I don't want to overdo do these weathering characteristics, these rust marks in particular. I'm very careful of where I choose to do it, looking at some of the references where the tow cables came across the hole and had rubbed in a previous life. Well, those areas were susceptible for paint wear, so I want to concentrate on those a bit, just add some highlights there and there, once again, kind of with the rust tones, just to, just to show the prior use of the vehicle and then aging over time. And when I get to the gun barrel here, well, this is uh, probably a little cliche to rust out the gun barrel, such as I did. This is where, you know, my artistic license, I'll, I'll give myself a pass here or there. It might be a little overdone, I'm not sure. But it does add, again, to the whole feeling of what we're trying to portray here in our final scene. 
Starting to come down to the home stretch here, I want to return to the rear of the vehicle, the oil paints and even the acrylics. I can only get so far with some of those kind of grittier, you know, rusty sort of effects that I was looking for that were so evident in those, in those reference photographs. So pigments is the way to go here. I've put together an assortment of some rust colors. And then I'm using that trick, we've done this before already, where I'm just kind of setting them in place using the oil paint. So it's thinner and oils of the appropriate color and just kind of let it wash over it. Once the oil's dry, the pigments will be stained with the oil colors and they'll be permanently affixed into place. And then that drive wheel, the one that I like so much, once again, pigments to the rescue here as well. Same combination of oil paints and pigments. Just dabbing them onto the surface. And then finally, it's time to start installing the road wheels, and you can see the variation of colors and tones and textures we have on those. Once again, I think they're going to play fairly significantly in the final scene. And then I noticed on some of these reference photographs, their keep-off signs that have been painted onto these vehicles. And I thought, well, that would be a nice touch. So I went through my decal box, my spare parts, and I happened to have a set of decals of individual letters. <laughs> it was a little bit tedious, but I thought, well, we're going to put some keep-off signs on my vehicle as well. And then that brings us to the conclusion of this episode. We have our vehicle basically painted out here. Of course, we'll do some final touches once we put everything together. To be honest with you, I do struggle with light colored vehicles and how to weather them. This is a perfect challenge for me because I have this desert camouflage vehicle with not a lot of weathering on it. So let's, you know, how to make it interesting without over weathering it and trying to keep it within context of the reference photographs. So far, so good, I think. You can let me know what you think in the comments as you look through these final photographs. If you liked this episode, please hit that like and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page, and the link for that is in the description below. I'd love to see your support over there. Looking forward, let's see. We have a base to work on in the next episode, for sure. Got a little start on that already, but not enough to show you yet. And I just received some figures, and I think that will make kind of a nice little context for this scene as well. So until the next time, guys, take care, and of course, happy modeling. <laughs>